class. So yeah, you'll be moving around. There's a lot of things to do. Um, however, think of it more like you're going to stay a little bit longer in the poses that you like, a little less time in the poses that you don't like, and then you're going to learn some new things that you can hopefully take with you into the new year, add to your practice, and reinvigorate it, see what's there for you. So if you're interested in that or the breath work or the meditation workshop that we have coming up, I'd love to give you some details, point you in the direction to where details are to be had and get you enrolled. So get at me after class and we can discuss. Let's do the thing we came to do, 75 minutes of a journey into power, start in child's pose. So chest down toward the mat, take your knees out wide, toes come to touch behind you. Go ahead and get really big in your pose here. Take your arms long and wide. Start to press everything that's touching the floor down into the floor. As we're here in our child's pose, if you don't have an assisting card at the front of your mat, I'm going to pass a few out. Simply a way to let me know if you are interested in hands-on assists. You are free to turn that from yes to no and no to yes as many times throughout the practice as you'd like. And as you start to create your breath here, create an intention along with it. What is it that's going to take you through this whole class today in a way that's sustainable? in a way that's exciting and in a way that allows you to just kind of discover what's present here. Take two more regular breaths here in through your nose, out through your mouth. Close your mouth for the next exhale. And then we'll take two really big Ujjayi breaths together. Fill in through your nose. Notice the pause at the very top. Exhale out through your nose. Notice the pause at the very bottom. One more like that. Fill up completely. Empty out completely. Downward facing dog. Go ahead, walk out your dog, bend one knee and then the other, take your hips side to side. Whatever movement you need to take here to get the creaks and cracks started, get them out, clear the cobwebs. And then start to create it right here so your movement matches with your breath. Where in your body might you feel a lift on your inhale? And where in your body can you pull in on your exhale? Three more breaths right here. On an inhale, lift your heels to the ceiling. Exhale, lower them down toward the floor. Two more like that, fill up. Empty out. Last one, fill up. Empty out. Feet to your hands, rag doll at the top of your mat. Pull the pit of your belly in and up. Now right here, let your head drop. Let your shoulders drop. And you can continue with that movement. Little sways side to side. Shake your head yes and no. Noticing here that the pauses of your breath match with a pause in your movement. Nice. On your next inhale, reach all the way up. Extended mountain. Look up. Reach up. Hands at heart center. You decide right here what you're getting out of your practice this morning, how you want to feel when you leave. And we'll seal those intentions with one ohm together. Full breath in. Uh -oh. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. 
chaturanga step or hop back upward facing dog on your inhale downward facing dog on your exhale full breath in exhale it out two more like that fill up and empty last one empty all the way out then feet to hands halfway lift fold extended mountain look up between your fingers press your feet down fold halfway lift chaturanga step or hop back upward facing dog downward facing dog three breaths in and out two more fill up and empty last one fill your lungs completely empty them out completely feet to hands halfway lift fold extended mountain fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog breath in and out two more lift on the inhale bend and hover your knees on the exhale lift up on the inhale bend and hover hop to the top of your mat halfway lift fold extended mountain last time here fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog breath in and out lift your heels hover your knees one more fill up empty completely step or jump forward halfway lift fold chair pose sink down reach high fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing down dog right side warrior one inhale all the way to the top chaturanga exhale all the way to the bottom up dog down dog left side feel the pause at the top chaturanga get to the pause at the bottom empty right where your elbows are at 90 then up dog downward facing dog left side oh, we already did the left side didn't we two breaths inhale exhale it out nice fill up and empty feet to your hands halfway lift fold chair pose take your gaze between your fingers fold halfway lift chaturanga up dog down dog right side warrior one press your feet down chaturanga on your exhale up dog down dog left side press down reach through your fingertips chaturanga you move with your breath your pace is going to be slightly different than your neighbors probably slightly different than what i'm calling but you make the decisions based on what you need here one more breath in together exhale out feet to your hands halfway lift fold chair pose fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog right side warrior one lunge deep nice chaturanga on your exhale up dog down dog left side inhale reach all the way up chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog full breath in exhale it out lift your right leg up behind you press it past the back of your mat 
So right here, we want to find more length rather than lift. So if it allows you to take all the bend out of your knee, yeah, bring it down just a little bit closer to the mat. Very nice. From here, bend your knee, open your hip, flip your dog. Both feet here land right on 12 o'clock. Bring your feet a little bit closer together. Bring this foot in to where you can feel my hand. Yes, right there. Press down through your heels. Lift up through your chest. One more breath. Both hands down. Side plank on the right. All four corners of your hand press into the floor. Now, can you dig down in and press every knuckle into the floor? Lift that top leg where it's going. Extend the whole leg. You take the flexion out of your knee, Jeffrey and everyone. One more breath. Both hands down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in and out. Lift your left leg up behind you. Press it to the back of the room. And right here, dial all five of those toes down toward the mat. So we've got nice, even hips on both sides. Press through both hands. Bend your knee, open up. Stay or flip your dog. Reach your fingertips so far forward. Take your gaze past your fingertips. And can you feel right there between your shoulder blades? Yeah, maybe there's a little bit of a back bend building right there. Can you take your gaze one inch closer to the floor? Nice, one more breath. Both hands down, side plank on the left. Create this pose in the way that you need it. One leg lifted or a knee on the floor. What makes you feel stable here? And then what makes this pose feel like it's yours? One more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in together. Blow it out. Step your right foot forward for crescent lunge. Come down so far in your lunge that you can feel the front of your hip flexor on your left leg stretching open. Yeah, and the further you come down in your lunge, the more you might be able to feel that stretch come up into the pelvis. Maybe even all the way up into your chest. Take that back bend if it's there. Lovely. Now, everyone, take your gaze to the ceiling. Move it back two more feet. One more breath to get long and tall. Hands to heart center, twist to your right. You take this to the degree that you need it. So hands can be together pressing in. If you want to open the chest even more, open the arms. Use your left arm here as leverage against your leg to open the chest even more. Can you peel that top shoulder back? One more breath in. Stay for your twist. Back to crescent lunge. Warrior two. Stay low in your front leg. Nice. And then notice right here that that knee is tracking straight over your middle toe. So for most of us, yeah, you've got to press out toward the right a little bit more in your knee. Yeah, so now it's tracking straight over your toe. Press down in your feet. Drishti on one spot. You've got it for three more breaths. Reignite your UJE. Let it support you. Two more. Last inhale, get tall. Extended side angle. Fingertips down toward your front arch, maybe to a block. Keep the front leg here at 90 degrees. 
reach your fingertips up here toward the windows rather than straight up to the ceiling. Yeah, so you feel how that gives you the stretch all the way from your back foot to the fingertips. One more breath, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Big breath in, exhale it out. Left foot forward, crescent lunge. Come down low right away. You know what you're looking for as far as the feeling in the front of that right hip. You are your own best teacher in the room because only you know what you feel there. So come down until you feel it. Lift the front of your pelvis all the way up towards your sternum. Nice. Now pull your shoulders together on your back. Maybe the arms go out of your peripheral vision. One more breath to get long. Hands to heart center, twist to your left. Look down and notice that your knee is still tracking right over top of your middle toe. For a lot of us in this pose, the knee kind of wants to collapse in towards center. So can you press it out a little more? Yeah, and then you can bring, your legs are longer than you think. You could probably bring your heel all the way up here. Yeah. And then that gives you a little bit of access to pressing out right there. You got it. Two more breaths in and out. Lengthen. Clear it out. Back to crescent lunge. Open up warrior two. Sink down deep. Bring back your breath. It got super quiet in here. So add it in. Big breath in. Exhale it out. You've got two more. Fill up. Empty like you mean it. One more. Fill up. Extended side angle. Fingertips come down toward the mat or to a block. Use your elbow or your arm here to press out into your knee. So then you can hug your knee in towards your elbow, adding one extra piece of stability right here to this pose. So on your next inhale, you can find some more length. Can you lift both sides of your torso here? One more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale it out, feet to your hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, sink deep, reach high. You know right here how far down your hips go for the twist, so don't wait for it. Get there right away. Sit deeper, lift the chest another inch, hands to heart center, twist to your right. Yeah, and then you choose here if there's a bird of paradise, a side crow, something else that you add here to make the practice feel like your own. Nice birds coming up. Go ahead, press through your heels. Send it out as far as you can. One more breath. Exhale it out. Back to chair and fold. Fingers to toes, forward fold. Take your peace fingers. Wrap them around your big toes. At least a little tiny bend in the knee here. So you can press down in the floor and press your sitting bones up. Press up into my hand. Yeah, just like that. So you're using the muscles in the back of your legs to stretch. Release your toes, inhale, chair pose, sit low right away. Reach high. Can you take your gaze between your fingertips? Nice, Raj, sink lower. One more breath in. Hands to heart center, twist to your left. Then take the ad here, side crow, bird of paradise, open the arms. Press down into your heels. 
just as much as you would if you were about to stand right back up. One more breath in, twist it out, back to chair, fold, palms to toes, forward fold, gorilla pose. Bend your knees a lot. And then create that same feeling here with the little bend, press down through your heels to lift your sit bones really, really high, like as high as you can, press up. Let your head drop here. It's a moment of rest. Allow yourself to have it. Release your feet. Crow pose. Crow, goddess. Tip your crow into an inversion, your choice. As you set up your crow here, yeah, you can totally take crow on your back there too. Amazing example here. You're getting the same amount of work. So pull in with your knees press out with your elbows. Add in your breath to the pose. On every exhale, can you find somewhere to pull in your belly button to your spine? Strong center so you can radiate out one more breath. Step or hop back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in together, breath out, move your feet to your hands, halfway lift, fold, extended mountain, eagle pose, right arm under, right leg over, and have a little seat. If the arm bind isn't feeling quite so comfortable this morning, it's a great place for a bear hug as well. I also really love that version because with the hands on either side, you can feel yourself pressing out into your shoulders. Expand your chest and upper back here. Make more room for the breath. Switch sides, left arm under, left leg over. Choose your drishti, your gaze on one spot. Lift the front of your pelvis all the way up towards your sternum. For some of us, that's gonna, it's gonna look like something. Your hips tilting back. For others of us, it's just gonna be a feeling. Right below your belly button, all those little muscles, can you engage them and lift up? Switch sides, right arm under, right leg over, last time here in this eagle. Use your inhales to find length, exhales to pull into center. Unwind, airplane, take your foot all the way back. The more you press through that back heel, the lighter your leg gets. The more bend you have in your standing knee, the more you can lift your chest. Nice, and once you're right here at what you feel is the peak of your airplane, open up half moon. Keep pressing through the back foot. Yes, so much so that you can lift it another two, three, five inches. Drishti on one specific spot, one more breath, both feet to the mat, fantastic. Inhale, extended mountain at the top. Take eagle pose on your left, left arm under, left leg over. Sink down. Now lift high. Lift your elbows up to shoulder height and pull your shoulders together on your back. Keep that shoulder integration and move to airplane. Yeah, so unwind everything, keep the shoulders lifted. So now that your back is to the ceiling, the shoulders feel like they're just moving straight back. Your shoulders are coming together. 
Press through your heel. One more breath in here. Half moon. Keep opening up the chest here. Can you peel that top arm back just a little bit further? All the way through your fingertips for one more breath. Both feet down. Very nice. Inhale, extended mountain at the top. Dancer pose on your right. We're going to catch the inside of the right ankle. Soft part of your elbow facing out and then thumb faces toward the ceiling so you can open this whole side of your shoulder. Now, as you press your shin back, allow that to be what drives this pose. So there's no work here happening in your right shoulder. One more breath, switch sides. And then get right to it, who we are in these transitions and how we show up for ourselves in that one moment of quiet that we get. That's how we show up everywhere else in our practice. So take the space, but stay present to it. You've got three more breaths on this side, drishti to one spot. And both feet to the mat. Tree pose, right side. Place your foot anywhere it wants to be except for the inside of the knee. So all the way from your ankle, all the way up to your thigh. And we're avoiding the knee because we wanna press in here. Press your foot into your leg and your leg into your foot. And then you start to feel that center line contraction. Use that to express out. What does your tree look like, feel like, fully expressed? Take your gaze to the ceiling or close your eyes for two more breaths. Let it get messy. Both feet to the ground, switch sides, left side tree. Place your foot and then start to press in your foot into your leg, your leg into your foot. Front of the pelvis lifts up towards your belly button. Now pull the front ribs back in towards center. For most of us, when we lift our arms here, the front ribs want to really flare out and we get this banana back. Can you pull all of that back in? Nice, so it's right over top of your hips. Close your eyes or take your gaze to the ceiling for two more breaths. Last one. Both feet to the ground. Inhale, extended mountain at the top of your mat and fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga, step or hop back. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right side triangle. So right toes toward the front of your mat. Take your back foot parallel to the back of your mat. Yeah, so your toes are facing the left side. You can actually step all the way forward probably. You got it. Little bend in the front knee. Now reach both sides of the body toward the front of your mat. On your next inhale, side facing wide leg forward fold. 10 toes to the left side of your mat. Grab your hips and have a fold. Yogi's choice here, if there's an inversion that you want, if there's some movement side to side that you feel that you need, take that on. Always the option here to stay in stillness. At least a little tiny bend in your knees so we can access the floor. 
This is part of our grounding sequence, and that's what we want to create here. Not just the, the feeling of grounding, but like a lived expression of grounding. So press down. Inversions, make your way down, get complete in your side to side movements. On your next inhale, rise all the way to stand. Namaste, front facing forward fold. So, right foot's forward. We're in our mini warrior one stance. You choose the bind behind your back. Namaste, hands, maybe grabbing the elbows and hinge forward. Feel into your feet here that they can press down into the floor. Both heels can press down. Both big toe mounds can press down. Add a little bit of bend into both knees. Keep your hips exactly where they are. Twist your triangle. So left arm comes down and then right arm to a tear toward the ceiling. You got it. Press down in both feet. One more big breath here. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale it out. Left side triangle. Create your triangle here and then come all the way up to stand. We'll work on this one here a little bit. What we want to create on both sides of our body here is lots of length. This bottom rib is actually the top of this triangle over here. So reach both sides of your body up here and then start to hinge forward, pulling your hip underneath as you hinge. Yes, and then once you get just as horizontal as you're going to go, then place the fingertips down to your shin, to a block. And you may find here that by keeping all that length here on your left side, you're not coming down as far into the triangle as you normally would. And that's fine. This is your triangle that you've just created. Make this length that you're experiencing here your default every time, and eventually going lower will come. Press into your feet, side facing wide leg forward fold, 10 toes to the right side of your mat. You could take a bind behind your back here, clasping the hands together. Another inversion if that's needed, more movement if that's needed. This is your practice. You create it. Take movement that not only gives your body what it wants and what it needs, but maybe take something here that just creates a little bit of joy. If a twist would feel good, take it. If just that moving side to side like makes you happy, gets the endorphins going, Make the movement happen. Get complete here in your side to side movement. And on your next in breath, rise all the way to stand. Use your strong core. Namaste, front facing forward fold on the left. Place your hands on your hips here so you can feel where they are in space and then take the hinge forward. You want to feel that both hips are level. So you could put one of those little bubble things right at your low back, and the bubble's going to be right in the middle. I guess that's called a level, isn't it? So you could put a level on your back, and it would be level. Little bend in both knees. Nice. Now keep your hips exactly where they are. Twist your triangle. Right arm down, left arm to a T or toward the ceiling. If it feels good for your neck, your drishti could follow your hand all the way up toward the ceiling. 
pull the jawbone straight back towards your neck. Extend your cervical spine. One more breath in. Chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Roll yourself out to a high plank and lower all the way to the floor. Once you get there, locust pose, press your hips down and lift. Reach for your heels. Nice, and then that lift is going to manifest different for all of us. Maybe it's a few inches. Maybe there's no lift at all and we're just going for length here. Press the crown of your head past the front of your mat. One more breath. Lower down, right cheek to the mat. Take your feet side to side. Locust pose number two. Press down, rise up. If you're looking for more here in your locust, you can reach your arms forward. Adds a bit more challenge to the pose. Nice. Now pull the shoulders together on your back. Squeeze them in towards center. Yes, just like that. One more breath. Lower all the way down. Left cheek to the mat. Take your feet side to side. Two floor bows. Your choice if you're doing one side and then the other or both. Clasp the outsides or the insides of your ankles and press your shins back toward the back of the mat. Allow that pressing to be what lifts your chest here. Feel for any work that's happening in your shoulders. Let that go. One more breath. Lower all the way down. Take your feet side to side if they want it. Floor bow number two. Press down. Rise up. Yeah, and then if you can here, if you've got the space, grab for your ankles rather than the tops of the feet so you can flex your feet and press them up toward the ceiling. Yes, just like that. You could sit something on your feet. Perfect. One more breath. Lower all the way down. Feet side to side. Place your hands at your lowest ribs. Inhale, upward facing dog. Stay here. Up dog's one of those poses we always just kind of flow through. See what's here for you to receive. Bend your elbows just a little and pull forward with your hands like you're clawing at your mat. One more breath. Downward facing dog. Breath in. Clear it out, camel pose. We'll do two of them. So bring your knees on down to the mat. We wanna set ourselves up, shoulders over hips, hips over knees. Hands in your imaginary back pockets, chest to the ceiling. Now the hands behind us can serve a couple of different functions. Of course, they're there for some support. I like to press the heels of my hands into the low back so I can retract the shoulders straight back. Gives you a little bit more room to breathe in this pose. One more big breath in. Exhale it out. On the next in-breath, come out. Sit back on your heels for high hero. Tuck the toes underneath. Give them a little stretch. You can rock the hips side to side here to make sure the baby toes get a little stretch on both sides. And then camel number two, come on up. Place your hands where they want to go. Lift the chest all the way up to the ceiling. And we want to find right here a little bit of a lift. So I did say the hands could serve two purposes. So you're pressing in to retract the shoulders. You can also press down to lift your thoracic spine up toward the ceiling. So it's almost like if there were somebody behind you, Pressing straight up. Yeah, so you're really lifting up and out of the low back. One more big breath. On your next inhale, come up and out. Sit back on your heels. 
and bring your feet all the way around for bridge pose. We'll set up flat on our back, knees to the ceiling. Extend your arms here and feel that you can graze the back of your heels with your fingertips. So the heels are stacked right underneath of your knees. Press down, rise up on an inhale. Bridge pose number one. Now, if you're used to taking these hip bridges in other modalities of movement, maybe like a strength class or something of the sort, a lot of times there's some squeezing of the glutes that's encouraged here. If that's an automatic for you, can you let that go? Nice, now press even more into your heels and let the work come from your legs. One more breath in. Exhale, return to the floor. Take the knees side to side if they want it. And then bridge pose number two, press down, rise up. And eyes are still open here. Drishti is active. If you haven't chosen a drishti on the ceiling yet, pick one. Something we can keep coming back to. Lower all the way to the mat. You have got four more back bends, and you get to decide what to do with them. So bridge or wheel. If you're going for wheel, set your hands close to your shoulders. Press down and on an inhale, rise. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, breath in, breath out. Bridge your wheel number two. Rise up on your inhale. Nice. Now bring your toes a little bit closer together here. So feet on 12 o'clock. Come in until you can feel my fingers. Yes, right there is where you want to be. One more breath. Lower all the way down. Breath in. Breath out. Inhale, rise. Number three. Keep the breath big here. Your full inhale using your full lung capacity. And then every time you exhale, clear it all out. So on the next inhale, you can fill all the way back up. One more breath, lower down, breath in together and out together. Last one, bridge your wheel, come on up. You got it, you're right here. Your drishti is on one spot, something right in front of your face. Stay for five, four, three, two, one. Lower all the way down, supta baddha konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together, knees out wide. One hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Or if space to breathe is what you need here, take your arms out long and wide. Pull your breath here down into your belly. Dead bug, feet to the ceiling. Grab for the outside edges of your feet, the backs of your thighs, or maybe the front of your shins. You can rock side to side for happy baby if that feels right. Come on back to center. Let's experience some stability. Take your feet to the ceiling. Lower your right leg down halfway to the mat. On your next exhale, switch. And then switch. Yeah, your pace. Make your breath part of the movement. That's when the magic happens, is when the breath marries the movement, equals all of the joy and wonderful things that we get from yoga, right? So press through your heels. You've got five. Four, three, two, one. Take your legs up. On an exhale, lower them 30 degrees to the floor. 30 degrees more. Hover two inches above the mat. Press through your heels. 
pull your belly down to the floor, keep pressing all the way back up. Exhale, lower 30, 30 degrees more. Down toward the floor, press into my hands. One more big breath, send them all the way back up. Exhale, lower 30, this is your last one. 30 more, hover them two inches above the mat, flutter kick for five, four, three, two, one, all the way back up, hug your knees. Maybe take them in little circles one way and then the other. And then we'll set up for abdominal twists. So set your knees over your hips, legs bent at 90 degrees. Fingertips behind your skull, elbows open wide, opposite elbow to opposite knee, your pace. And then different things can be happening here with the legs. They can stay static at center. Yeah, or you can extend one leg and then the other. Keep the elbows wide. So it's almost more like here you're lifting your armpit toward the leg rather than the elbow. Yeah, do you feel the difference that makes in your obliques twisting side to side? You've got it. Keep going. Change your pace if you need to. Stay for another five, four, three, two, one, hug your knees, roll like a ball, forward and back three times, we'll meet in boat. Balance all the way up on your sit bones. You choose if your heels are on the ground or if they're lifted. Hands can come behind the legs for support or stay lifted. Now lift your chest toward the ceiling. Pull the jawbone straight back towards your neck. Lift the crown of your head toward the ceiling. One more breath. Hug your knees, rock back and forth. Make your way toward right side half pigeon on your back or on your belly. So on your back is, or on your belly is gonna look like bringing your right knee toward your right wrist with your ankle over toward the left side. Keep your right ankle flexed here. That's going to keep any twisting or rotation out of your knee. Now, the degree that that foot gets over to the left or to the front of the mat is going to be different for all of us and probably different for every single practice. So if you're in that spot here where you're trying to get it a little further over toward the left or a little further toward the front of your mat, go ahead and place your foot where you want it and stay lifted rather than coming all the way down. So give your muscles a little bit more of an opportunity to kind of get used to, okay, this is where you want me to go. Let's see how far we can take that today. Three more breaths here on this side. Fill up completely. Notice the pause and empty completely. Notice the pause. At the end of your exhale, switch sides can just swing your foot around or take a down dog if you'd like an extra stretch for the back of the legs. And then on the side, left knee toward the left wrist with the ankle moving over toward the right. Keep the flexion happening in your left foot.
once you've got that set up, the foot's where you want it, you've decided how far down you're coming, take your awareness to your back leg. We want right here for the knee to be facing down toward the floor. So you'll actually be resting the top of your foot yeah, onto the floor. And what might help you, if you wanna bring your foot in just a little bit closer to the center of your mat, yes, right there. And then what might be helpful is a little bit of support. You've got three more breaths. At the end of your exhale, go ahead and unwind. We're going to move to double pigeon. So bring your leg all the way around. Double pigeon just looks like crisscross applesauce with the feet and the knees stacked on top of each other. So you're creating almost a little box right in front of you. This is the time for props. So it may be helpful, Jeffrey's got it on screen, uh, to sit on a block if you're all the way up here. Maybe a block goes under a knee or under a foot. We'll stay here for three big breaths. Drishti on one spot. Switch sides, opposite leg on top. Notice where the side's different. Add those extra supports with a block or a towel where they're needed. And we'll take three breaths on the side. And unwind, find your frog pose on your back or on your belly. If you're next to a wall, it may be a great opportunity to place your feet on the wall. So frog, we're gonna organize our body so that our feet are flexed, knees at 90, and then hips at 90 degrees. And then we're gonna allow here gravity to do the work. So notice in your body where there might be places you can let go. Places in my body where I tend to hold extra tension in this pose are right between the shoulders. And then in the knees, I tend to press the knees down into the floor here rather than letting go. See if on your exhale, you can find that feeling of surrender. Nice, and then those of us here with our belly to the floor, pull the pit of your belly in and up a little so you are supporting the low back. We want a nice, long, low back spine here. So if you were to have a pole or maybe an arm on your back here, you want to be able to fill all of this space, lift up, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, and this is like the pose, right? That you need your breath in. You can find some vinyasa, some flow with the breath, even here.
On your next exhale, see if there's a little more that you can give up. So you can take this pose and make it just a little bit more restorative. Feel for the places where you are fixed and pressing and let them go. We're here for just five more breaths. Make the most of it. After this exhale, make your way back to your mat. And we'll meet in seated single leg extension. So right leg extends long right out, out of the hip. Left leg comes in like tree pose. On the inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Send your toes up toward the ceiling. And then create your true north feet here. So your foot is headed all the way up toward the ceiling, press through your big toe mound, press through your heel. And then you decide right here if there's a bigger bend that's needed in the knee or if some of the bend can start to disappear. adding any support under the knee that might be necessary. You've got two more breaths right here. Release your toes, switch sides. Left leg extended in front, right leg in like tree pose, reach up on an inhale, exhale, fold forward. Feel the fold here happening from the hip creases. So if you feel that there's like a big rounding in your back, that may be an indication that you're sitting on the back side of your sit bones. So the difference here being if you're sitting on the front side of the sit bones, the pelvis kind of spills forward. If you're all the way back here, you've got a really big round in the back. So see if you can sit forward a little bit more. Nice, and then that may mean a bigger bend is needed than the knee. Take it. You've got three more breaths. Release your feet. Both feet forward, ankles together, forward fold. Inhale to rise, exhale to fold. Send your center of your chest here forward towards your toes. One default that a lot of us end up in here is kind of sending the crown of our head toward our toes, and that's how we end up in that big rounded position. Can you instead retract the shoulders onto your back and send the center of your chest forward? And then you can, of course, drop the head. One more big breath. Release your toes, tabletop or reverse plank. Soles of your feet on the floor, fingertips towards your heels. And we're just gonna lift up. Hips toward the ceiling, chest toward the ceiling. If you're interested in taking the reverse plank, it's just here in this tabletop, but with the legs extended. So press down even more through your big toe mounds. One more big breath, lower all the way down. Fish pose, grab for your block 
and place it right between your shoulder blades lengthwise. Does anyone not have a block that wants one? There's an extra in case. Sometimes it feels good to have one right behind your head for support. You're welcome. And then we're here just laying back like a mermaid on the beach. Let your shoulders fall. You choose the leg variation that feels good for your low back here. So we've got in the studio here, we've got soup to bata legs happening. We've got legs out long, knees to the ceiling. Take a little pelvic tilt here. So lift your pelvis up off the mat just an inch. Send your tailbone toward your heels and then lower back down. Just create a little bit more space in the low back. And we're still present here. So eyes are open. Your drishti is to that point on the ceiling that you had chosen. A focused gaze, but let it be soft. Roll to your right side to release your props or move your elbows out of the way. And let's get upside down. You choose your rejuvenation pose. So headstands or handstands, take those on at the front of your mat or take up some wall space. Shoulder stands and waterfalls, always an option to place a block underneath for some support. We want to just really get our feet above our hips, maybe the hips above the heart. Nice. Now with your feet facing the ceiling, we want to place our heels directly over top of our pelvis. So all the weight of our legs can kind of chill right there where all the bones are. We've got support rather than having that weight be distributed into the upper back and neck. Nice. Those of us in shoulder stand here, press your triceps down. And then can you hug your elbows in together? Maybe they don't move closer together, but just that energetic feeling of hugging them in. Those of us getting completely upside down, press your heels to the ceiling. Pull the front of your ribs in towards center. Nice airtime, Jeffrey. A couple of more breaths and then make your way down toward a child's pose for full inversions. Shoulder stands and waterfalls can take plow. Bring your feet down behind your head, toes toward the floor. And then plow to deaf yogi. Bend your knees, let your back round and bring your knees down around your ears. Take your arms out long on your mat and using them as breaks, come down one vertebra at a time all the way down to your mat. Hug your knees into center and drop them to your right side for a supine twist. Jeffrey and friends at home, you can go ahead and dim your lights if you'd like. Get your eye towels ready or whatever you have prepared for yourself for Shavasana. Stack your hips here so there's one on top of the other. And so for most of us, that's going to mean bringing your bottom hip a little bit closer to the center of your mat.
Bring your knees to center, switch sides. Create that stacking of the hips here. So your bottom hip is toward the center of your mat, and then the top one is just sitting directly on top. Everyone in studio has a cold towel. Feel free to reach for that when you're ready for it. And you can place it over your eyes, your forehead, your neck, your chest, whatever might feel nice. And come on back to center, Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles of your feet together, knees out wide. Use this pose to start creating your Shavasana. Bring your shoulders together underneath of you. And take that little pelvic tuck so your low back can be long on the mat. Shavasana, arms out long and wide, legs out long and wide. Allow your breath right here to return to a natural pace. Something you can observe, but not something that you need to have any control over. I'll share today's journey to the heart passage titled, Joy is Your Next Lesson. Learning compassion, understanding love, and experiencing joy. That is our purpose and our reason for being here. That is our true mission on this planet. Learning compassion may have been difficult because in order to feel compassion for others without judging, we had to go through some difficult times ourselves. Times when, despite our best efforts, we couldn't help ourselves. Times when, despite our searching, we couldn't find the answers. As many say, it's usually our own pain and problems that make us compassionate. Understanding love may have taken many years, many heartbreaks, much searching and grasping, until we discovered that the key to love was our own heart. Until we discovered that love wasn't exactly what we thought or hoped it would be. Because now it's different. And now it's better. Don't give up. Don't stop now. Don't let the residue, the pain, or the tiredness from the early parts of your journey stop you from moving forward we first had to learn about compassion and love in order to learn joy. Rest here. The hard work is done. Now you have reached your reward. Now it's time to learn joy.
If your mind has started to wander, simply bring it back to the breath. Begin to deepen your breath, lengthen your inhales, lengthen the exhale. Begin to bring some movement back to your body, wiggle your fingers and your toes, roll out your wrists and your ankles and make your way toward a full body stretch, fingers in one direction, toes in the other. Hug everything into center. Bring your knees to your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze. And rock over to your right side for infant's pose. Give your forehead a soft place to land and allow yourself to get supported here. Send yourself gratitude for showing up and doing the work. Send all the other yogis here gratitude in studio and at home for showing up to do the work with you. Press your left hand into the floor to rise to a comfortable seat, eyes closed or drishti settled in front of your nose. On an inhale, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, hands to heart center. And we'll end as we began with one ohm together. Breath in. Uh, oh. Thumb knuckles rise to third eye center. We bow and acknowledge each other. Namaste. Great practice, yogis. Thank you, Jeffrey, and our online friends for joining us and all of your lovely kitties for joining us on the screen. Um, questions, comments, feedback, I'm here for it. If you're interested in learning more about the workshops we have coming up, I'm happy to have that discussion and help you get enrolled. Watch your eyes. Place your props on the floor up here so I know which ones need wiped down, and I'll see y'all shortly.